Okay, we are back. We are doing this. We're turning these old sheets into a poofy, lacy blouse. Now, I promise no historical accuracy, even though I spent way too many hours watching Bernadette Banner, American Duchess, and many others on YouTube. Sadly, I haven't somehow absorbed their powers through YouTube, so I guess I'm gonna have to figure this out as I go. First off, go to your grandma's attic and steal those old white sheets that have been gathering dust there for the past 50 years. Mine were actually kept in shed, but you know, same difference. Also, try to pick some sheets that actually have a nice little trim. We're going to be using this to not have to do the anxiety inducing lace insertions or pin tucks. Extra bonus, these sheets are most definitely made of cotton, so you'll have your natural fiber and semi-historical accurate fabric. We are going to start with cutting the pattern out that we made in part one of this series. If you missed out on that video, you can find it over here. Now, these sleeves are crazy big, so I'm not doubling up on my fabric to make better use of the fabric that I do have. I honestly almost used a whole tablecloth just for these sleeves. These babies are big. Don't forget to copy any markings that you've made on the pattern onto the fabric. As I'm adding cuffs to these sleeves, I'm removing the cuff length from the pattern while I cut it out. Next, we're gonna cut out the back yoke. I'm using the decorative edge as the bottom edge of my pattern. And there we have our back yokes, complete with lace and pin tucks, without any effort on our parts. I was going to cut out my front yoke on the fold, but since I want to use the existing trim, I can do that. I just have to cut it out on the double. I completely forgot to add extra seam allowance for this though, so please don't repeat my mistakes. Next, I'm cutting out my main front and back pieces. These are cut and fold, but since I want to ruffle this part of the blouse, I'm adding extra space at the fold to give me more fabric to work with. I'm measuring out 10 cm at the top and the bottom when I do this. Time to iron it all. I'm folding over the middle edge from my back yoke so I can easily hem it later. This will form the keyhole back. Next, I'm sewing together the front yoke with a French seam. I swear Bernadette Banner once mentioned that sometimes historical garments were sewn together with French seams. I'm taking that and just putting this whole thing together with French seams. Even though I have no clue if it is actually historical correct in the way I'm doing them. If you don't know how to do a French seam, there are many, many tutorials on YouTube which can quickly and easily learn you how to do them. Now I'm going to set my stitch length to the widest setting and do a gathering stitch at the top of the bottom front piece. Now I can gather up the fabric and pin it to the back of the top yoke. Next I'll sew on the right side to attach the pieces, leaving the bottom lace edge of the yoke free. The insides I'll finish later with a rolled hem by hand.
here I actually realized that part of the tablecloth that I used for my front yoke actually had a big repair patch in it. So I ended up having to do a lace insurgent anyway. So please check the fabric you're using, especially if it's thrifted. I'm measuring out some lace so I can use to cover it up and sewing in the middle seam to make it match with the front yoke. Next, I can pin the lace in place and sew along both sides of it. Now, you can turn your work around and carefully cut open the fabric behind the lace that you just sewed in. Finally, I press the fabric away from the lace and press it again so I can st stitch it down. Now let's work on the back. First I stitch down the middle of the back yoke. Next I'm doing a running stitch so I can gather the bottom piece of the back. And once again, pin everything together. Once again, I'm pinning the bottom to the wrong side of the top yoke, before stitching everything on the right sides. After stitching this together, I press the seam allowance to the bottom to make the finishing by hand later easier for me. We can now start on setting in sleeves. Make sure to sew a gathering track in your sleeve gap and check the markings when you're pinning this in. As you can see I'm gathering my sleeve a whole lot to make it fit in the armhole of my blouse.
I'm also putting in the sleeves with a French hem, so I'm trimming back the seam allowance before I do my second pass on the sewing machine. I can definitely recommend going slowly when sewing these sleeves in. Now, we can sew up the side seams of our blouse and the sleeves in one go. So, I'm pinning them together and, once again, French seaming them. Make sure your seams are matching up in the armholes. is almost done. I'm going to make some lace cuffs, so I'm just measuring out how much lace I need before hemming the edges and attaching it to the bottom of the sleeves. Next, I'm attaching a lace trim to the neckline to act as a collar. And finally, ironing over the bottom edge twice, so I can easily hem it. The last finishing touches were sewing up the inside seams by hand and adding hooks and eyes where needed. And finally, my blouse is done! I'm really happy with how it turned out and how much floof the sleeves ended up with. Also, it definitely was pretty easy to put together and went pretty quickly. It was my first time using French seams and I'm pretty curious to see how they will hold up. Please let me know what you think of the blouse and how it turned out. Also, please comment down below if you have any questions. Thank you for watching and see you next time.